All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to school. Christmas break is over. We're back into things. Ladies and gentlemen, the first video we have back is multiplying and dividing fractions using word problems. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, no graphic organizer for this one. You will have a worksheet, however, just letting you know. Let's make sure everything works out well. This is a very, very difficult skill. Um, basically, hard for you guys to understand, hard for you to do. I want you to watch the video, make sure you know everything that's going on, because I will promise you that in this video, some of the questions that you see are going to be very similar to your test questions, which you will have in like a day. So just letting you know, your test is coming up in like a day, and these questions are going to help you with that, and it's also going to help you with your I-step. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I have seven examples. Don't know if I'm going to go through all seven, but I am going to go kind of quickly. All right. Word problems. We're going to talk about multiplying and dividing right now. Now, here's a list. You guys should have this already. We've already talked about it. You should have it saved somewhere in your notes, somewhere, okay? Um, but multiplying, some of the words that mean multiplying are of, multiplied, times, in all, okay? For dividing, it could be divided, split equally, if you cut something, or in each. Now, you notice there's two of them, of and in each, that have stars next to them, okay? I put that there because those could be tricky, all right, um, of is sometimes misleading, okay, so you got to be careful with of, and also in each could be misleading. So in these particular problems, what you really need to do is ask yourself, does my answer make sense, okay, and that's kind of hard for some of you, but you have to ask yourself, does it make sense at the end, because if it doesn't make sense, then maybe you should just try the other one and see if you can get the correct answer, okay. However, on your test, they try to trick you, and they'll put both of those answers down, so that's where it gets tricky. That's where we're going to get into some hard stuff. We're going to start with the first one. It says, Bailey's Restaurant bought six and one-third pounds of onions. The restaurant bought eight times as much potatoes as onion. All right. How many pounds of potatoes did the restaurant buy? Now, when I do word problems, I like to make sure that I read the question three times. That's just a little skill for me because I know that if I read it three times quickly, I know I'm going to get all the information. So I write down a check mark that says I read it once. I'm going to read it again. Bailey's Restaurant bought six and one-third pounds of onions. The restaurant bought eight times as much potatoes as onion. How many pounds of potatoes did the restaurant buy? And that's my second time. And one more time just for good measure. And this time I might even underline stuff that I know I'm going to use or keywords. So Bailey's Restaurant bought six and one-third pounds of onions. Okay, well, we know that's onions. We know six and one-third pounds. The restaurant bought eight times. Eight is a number. We need that number. And times, I know times means multiply. So, hey, look at that. We're going to multiply. How many pounds of potatoes did the restaurant buy? Well, we're going to go ahead and multiply. So we're going to do six and one-third. And we're going to multiply that by 8. And this is just simple. We've got to remember how to do these things. All right, so when we multiply fractions, the first thing we needed to do is change them to improper. So 6 times 3 is 18, plus 1 is 19 over 3. And 8 is going to be 8 over 1. Okay, let's see. Can I pre-simplify anything? No, I cannot, so I need to simply multiply across. 19 times 8. Wow, that stinks. Okay, I might have to do that on the side, or I might be able to figure it out. But either way, it's 152. So we have 152 over 3, okay? And what do I need to do with 152 over 3? Well, it's an improper fraction, so I need to change it, which means divide 152 divided by 3. That's 5. 5 times 3 is 15. Subtract, we get 0. Bring down our 2. 3 goes into 2 0 times. 0 times 3 is 0. Subtract, we have 2 left over, nothing to bring down. My answer is 50 and 2 thirds, but I need a label because it's a word problem. So word problem is, and my label is, if I go back up here, pounds. So 50 and 2 thirds pounds. All right, so 50 and 2 thirds pounds. That's my first one. All right, that's example one. Let's move on to example two. All right, example number two. Okay, example number two says, Betsy has two-fifths of a cup of powdered sugar. He sprinkles, apparently Betsy is a he, he sprinkles three-fourths of the powdered sugar onto a plate of brownies. How much sugar does Betsy sprinkle on the brownies? All right, I read that one time. I'm going to go back, read it one time. I'm probably going to read it a couple more times just to make sure. I'm going to start underlining, though, this time. Betsy has two-fifths of a cup of powdered sugar. He sprinkles three-fourths of the powdered sugar, three-fourths of the powdered sugar onto a plate of brownies. How much sugar does Betsy sprinkle on the brownies? All right, ladies and gentlemen, of. I see of. I know that's going to be it. Okay, I see it twice. There's no other words. So I'm not going to look for a second one. What do I do with these? I'm actually going to go ahead and multiply. All right, so 2 fifths times 3 fourths. Can I pre-simplify anything? I cannot. 
Oh, yes, I can actually look at that. 2 and 4. 2 goes into 2 one time, 2 goes into 4 two times. Go ahead and multiply across. Go ahead and do that, and you're going to get 3 over 10. Okay, and once again, I need to make sure it's simplified. It is. How much sugar? It's 3 tenths of a what? Well, it's 3 tenths of a cup. There's my label. Okay, so 3 tenths of a cup, ladies and gentlemen. Example 2 done. Let's go on to example number 3. All right. Example number three, let's go people, let's go. Come on video, come on video. All right, what's going on with my video? Here we go, and next. All right, there we go, sorry guys, moving on. This question is on your test. It's a very similar test question, here you go. At Goshen High School, half of the students play a sport. Of the students who play a sport, once again that word of, man, of, of the students who play a sport, half play football. What fraction of the students play football? Of the students who play a sport, half play football. All right, listen, there's a lot of ofs. We're going to multiply. Half times one half. Those are our two numbers in here. Half times a half. Cannot pre-simplify anything. I'm going to go ahead and multiply across. It gives us one-fourth. What fraction of the students play football? One-fourth play football. Okay? So one-fourth of the students play football. That one's a tough one. Make sure you have it. You're going to need it. Let's move on. All right, next one. All right, question four. A cookie factory uses one and a half bags of flour in each batch of cookies. The factory uses four and a third or four and a half bags of flour yesterday. How many batches of cookies did the factory make? I should probably read this one a couple more times. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. All right, uh, cookie factory uses one and a half bags of flour in each batch of cookies. The factory uses four and a half bags of flour yesterday. All right, so now this is where we're careful. Okay, it says in each, and if we went back to the beginning, in each... That was a word for division, so we need to divide, but we had to be careful on this one because we can't divide one and a half by four and a half. Okay, this is where you got to be careful. When you're dividing, you got to take your biggest number first, and I'm pretty sure four is bigger than one. So we need to take four and one half, and we're going to divide that by one and a half. Okay, and what do we do to divide? Well, the first thing we need to do, two times four is eight, plus one is nine over two. We're still dividing. It's going to be three over two. What do I do when I divide? Well, the next chain, keep, change, and flip, which means I should have 9 over 2 times 2 over 3. Go ahead and pre-simplify if I can, which I absolutely can, which is awesome. Okay, 1 and 1, and then 3 goes into 3 and 9, so 1 and 3, and 3 times 1 is 3, and 1 times 1 is 1, which gives us 3. How many batches of cookies did the factory make? Three batches, and that's what we needed to know, three batches. Ladies and gentlemen, that's that one. Moving on. Example number five. On Friday night, Fernando ate a pizza for dinner and had half of the pizza left over. On Saturday, he ate four-fifths of what was left. All right, so here's one of those other ones. All right, we have half of the pizza, so we know we have a half, and he's going to eat four-fifths of what was left, so of, multiply. So one-half times four-fifths. Can I pre-simplify? Well, absolutely, two and four. Two goes into two one time, two goes into four two times. Go ahead and move across. That gives us two over five. How much of the pizza did Fernando have, or how much of the pizza did Fernando eat on Saturday? He ate two fifths of the pizza. Okay, so he ate two fifths of the pizza. That's my answer. Two fifths. Make sure you got it. All right, two left. We're almost done. All right. Oops. Number six. Guess what? We already did this one. We just did the exact same thing. Let's move on. We're gonna go to seven. All right, Mrs. Turner. Here we go. Mrs. Turner ran three and three quarters miles around the track each lap. Man, that word each. I'm probably going to have to divide on that one. Just let's double check though. Each lap is three-fourths of a mile. How many laps did she run? You might want to read it three times. I'm going to read it twice. I'm going to read it once to myself. Here we go. And we'll read it one more time to myself just to make sure I know everything. All right. I'm pretty sure it's dividing. Three and three-fourths three and three-fourths is the biggest number. We're going to divide by three-fourths. Once again, we've got to be careful with that one. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, you don't got to be careful. It doesn't always have to be the biggest number, but in this particular case, that last one it did. Um, like I said, you got to be careful. These can be confusing. All right, moving on. Three and three-fourths. Change it to improper. Four, eight, twelve, fifteen over four. Divided by three over four. Oh, man. What do I do next? Keep, change, flip. That would be fifteen over four times four over three. Can I pre-simplify anything? Absolutely. Four and four become one. 3 and 15, 3 goes in both of them, 1 time and 5 times. 5 times 1 is 5, 1 times 1 is 1, that gives us 5. What's our, what are we looking for? How many laps? That's 
five laps, ladies and gentlemen. That's all right. You guys are about to do your next worksheet. That worksheet is on word problems. It is worksheet number two. Just a little hint, though, you do not, and I repeat, do not need to do number 11 unless you want to challenge yourself. Number 11 is a level four question. If you get it, hey, you might get a, num you might get a four on this activity, but hey, level four question. You do not need to do number 11 unless you feel the need. Ladies and gentlemen, 10 questions, your worksheet. Hey, after this, you basically got a test. Good luck.